Okay, let me get it up. Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this spot on perfect, uh, it is Thursday, January 20th, 2022. And guys, I've got a lot going on the next few days. I'm closing on this place and whatnot. So, uh, not sure I will be able to bring you rants on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So, I'm just going to race ahead before my buyer gets here and see how many I can get uh, socked away for the weekend. And so, we're going to pretend like it is Friday, January 21st, 2022. Because I'm thrilled to see that mongabay.com, that Rhett Butler, five minutes ago, uh, running early this week, and has our uh, ecological meltdown roundup all set for us. So we're going to go over to mongabay.com and uh, just taking a quick run through. I, I don't know what it is. I have noticed that Rhett is really cranking up the hopium uh, here in 2022. I don't know whether he's cranking it up or he's front loading it. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, the Friday ecological meltdown roundup rant is sounding more and more like the Saturday hopium roundup. And I'm not going to embarrass Rhett or myself by talking about all of this uh, hopium uh, showing up on Manga Bay. But don't worry, there's plenty of reality. And I noticed this, ba I, I am using a not fully charged battery. So I'm just going to dive into this and uh, see if the battery and whatnot uh, survives. So we're going to let the little dog crank up his his squirrel chasing battery like that and uh let's see where have we heard this story before we're going to start as we often do down there in brazil uh see this is why i need rhett's undying attention uh as i never would have known this if Manga Bay was not reporting this. Today, <clears throat> Brazil's illegal gold rush is fueling corruption, violent crime, and deforestation. Yes. <clears throat> Once the epicenter of the global trade in gold, illegal mining is once again surging across the Amazon. Its extraction and trade is not only fueling corruption, money laundering, and criminal violence, it is accelerating deforestation in the world's largest tropical forest, says Robert Moga, co-founder of the Agarape Institute. MUGA details a range of challenges facing efforts to rein in the gold mining sector. He says political leadership is critical to make progress on the issue. Oh, yes. Uh, quote, absent political will from the top, which of course is completely absent, Brazil's gold chain will continue to resemble the Wild West, close quote. You know, come on, Wynn, give me a break here. Uh, hopium, hopium, hopium. Uh, do we ever, uh, yes. Uh, you know, actually reviewing a book called Central African Forest Forever. Central African Forest Forever. Can you say oil palm forest and maybe some cacao forest, some banana forest? 
You know, it was Manga Bay uh, back before Rhett turned into such a hopium addict. It was Manga Bay that really spelled out about how there will be no forest left in Central Africa by the year 2050. Ain't going to happen. And pretty much every tree uh, there is going to be gone. And before even the trees are cut down, that, you know, the, 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 the forest is going to become a biological desert in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa uh, well before the actual trees are lying on the ground. That was back in the days that Manga Bay used to talk about that, but now we are uh, reviewing a book with the knee-slapping name Central African Forest Ever, and uh, I just can't uh, help this. One new, one unique aspect of the book is the author's focus on how Chinese pioneers, Chinese pioneers in sustainable forest management have put forth solutions to safeguard the rainforest of Central Africa. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try not, you know, sometimes you reach a statement so absolutely outrageous from the other side of the twilight zone. Uh, I couldn't let that one slip by. Uh, okay, back to reality. Let's go over to Thailand where we find a huge blow for tiger conservation as two of the big cats killed in Thailand. Authorities in Thailand have arrested five suspects for killing two Indo-Chinese tigers in a protected area. Yes. Uh, the tigers had been stripped of their skins and meat, raising suspicions among experts that financial motives hmm, may have driven the killing. Indonesian Indo-Chinese tigers have already been declared extinct in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, and while several breeding populations persist in Thailand, they number no more than 200 uh, individuals. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Here is some hopium on the monarch butterfly. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. Let's go over for some reality from Kathmandu. In Kathmandu, a struggle for water, a struggle for water amid worsening floods. In Kathmandu, residents face the dual challenge of freshwater aquifers running dry and increasingly unpredictable monsoons causing flash floods. The combination of climate change and a rapidly growing urban population is straining an already overwhelmed municipal water system forcing many residents to have to buy their water by the tank at high prices. Yeah. An ambitious project to pipe water to the city from a nearby river was shut down within months of its long delayed start. Yes. Uh, Anyway, I think we get it. Uh, you know, this is their, I guess their ongoing uh, reports coming from the Greater Mekong region. Greater Mekong primates struggle to cling on amid persistent 
threats. I'm almost ready to break this up and I uh, go put a wind guard over this, but I'm going to plug on with the persistent threat of wind on my microphone. The greater Mekong region is home to 44 species of non-human primates, including gibbons, lorises, langurs, macaques, and snub-nosed monkeys, several of which were first described just within the last few years. Habitat loss and hunting driven by the wildlife trade and consumption have driven many of the region's primates to the brink of extinction, with many species now only existing as tiny populations in isolated, fragmented pockets of habitat. Yes, experts say controlling the illegal wildlife trade is complicated by the presence of legal markets for primates, often for use in biomedical research. Yep, yep. Okay, let's go check in with the planet's oceans. In hot water, ocean warming hits another record high on climate change. A new study has found that for the sixth year in a row, the world's oceans have been hotter than they have ever been in recent history due to human-induced climate change. Yep, yep, yep. A warming ocean creates a multitude of issues, driving extreme weather events, accelerating sea level rise, disrupting marine biodiversity, threatening global food security, and melting polar ice shelves. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... Demorhopium. Uh, all right, we got some C word news. Grounded by conflict and corona panic, Colombia's bird tourism struggles to soar. Yes. Uh, do you think so? The bird tourism. All right. Uh, I just wrapped up my uh, my oilprice.com roundup, and this one did not make it to oilprice.com but did make it to Manga Bay. French oil company's totals oil pipeline gets go-ahead from Uganda despite secret terms. Uganda's parliament has passed a bill approving the construction of a controversial pipeline that will cut through high biodiversity areas and displace thousands of people. Critics say the bill was rushed through Parliament to pave the way for a secretive agreement between the government and French oil giant Total Energies, the pipeline's operator. The three and a half billion dollar pipeline will run 1,450 kilometers, otherwise known as 900 miles uh, from, uh, you know, the highlands to the Indian Ocean. Um, the new bill that undergirds it holds supremacy, quote, supremacy 
over all existing legis legislation, making it, quote, very difficult for laws that offer environmental and social protections to be upheld. Gee, I can't imagine why. All right. Okay. Uh, more hopium. Let's go over to the Solomon Islands out in the middle of nowhere. Analysts point to logging and mining to explain the Solomon Islands unrest. Yes, in November 2021, the capital of the Solomon Islands was racked by riots that left three people dead. The unrest was stoked by the Prime Minister's decision to end diplomatic ties with Taiwan and instead side with Beijing, stirring up anti-Chinese sentiment. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, that's the cover story. However, <clears throat> some analysts say the true causes for discontent lie in the cozy relationships between officials and the foreign logging and mining firms that are ravaging the country. Uh, and anyway, guys, I've, uh, I hate to cut this short, but, uh, <clears throat> I've, I'm very antsy. We are getting ready to close on Crazy Crane Campground, and I see, uh, shit, that I need to go make a very important phone call. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to wrap this up here. I think my battery survived, uh, depending on what I hear in this phone call in the next five minutes. Uh, I might or might not have time to come back with a limited edition hopium roundup for the week. But I got to go uh, deal with some uh, global industrial economy issues in my own life. Bye, guys.